Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I was actually not thinking about doing this one because I'm still recovering from my sore throat, but we got some interesting news. Maya 2024 has just released and if you're a subscriber or you own a license, you're going to have access to it right away. You can download it right now. And it's, it comes with a lot of really, really cool, interesting things here inside of Maya. There's a lot of animation improvements, there's performance improvements. We're going to talk about some of them throughout the video, uh, but I want to take a look at some of the uh, polygon or the, the modeling tools, which I think a lot of you guys are going to be really really excited about so before we jump into the into the news i just want to remind you guys that we have complete guides to maya available right now in udemy of course we don't have one with maya 2024 but most of the things that we cover in our complete guide to maya 2023 can be used with this version as well so here Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check skill shirt down here below. So there we go, a couple of changes. First of all, curves and surfaces are now two different shelves. I mean, if you're working with nerves, then this is might, might be interesting. I like the fact that now here on the curves, we have access to most of the curves that we would normally have to go here to create and select them. Uh, other than that, there's a couple of uh, changes on the uh, Booleans thing. So you, if you like working with Booleans, there's been quite a bit of optimization there. I don't use Booleans as much, but uh, it's, it's fun to, to see how or, or where these things are going. I'm gonna talk about the modeling updates, which I think are really, really interesting. So the first thing is they are improving upon their retopology or their automatic retopology thing. So as you can see here with this like troll character, you can now get some decent amount of um, of uh, like uh, or animation ready meshes. Nowadays, uh, a lot of retopology, especially for things that are not going to be as important for a production, can be done this way. So if you want to retopology as a character real quick, this is a really nice way to do it. If you are working with hard surface stuff, there's this new feature preservation thing that allows you to maintain the hard edges with a better like edge flow. It's still not the best one. Like if you were to do this with traditional subdivision modeling, you might get like way, way cleaner topology, but it's going to give you a nice result nonetheless so if you're doing some like product renderings and stuff like that it should be perfectly fine there's this retopologize with symmetry it will make sure that both sides of your character are completely symmetrical c remesher does this as well and it's very obnoxious that it will try to retopologize things and it will add certain details on one side and certain details on the other one so this one's actually quite uh, good news um keep input mesh that's fine uh, it would like hide them but now it's it's both uh it, it keeps both of them and this is the one that's really interesting to me which is the make live objects so normally when we're doing retopology this is not the high poly but when we're doing retopology you would uh, click this thing right here the little uh, live surface button and use your quadro to redraw your topology but if you had multiple objects you would need to select all of the objects so let's say i want to do a retopology of the horns and the head right here i would need to combine them into a single object and that can mess up some things and you need to re just reclean and stuff like that. Now you can actually select both of them. And then when you do retopology, it's actually gonna go over both of the elements right there. Well, <laughs> um, it didn't work exactly as expected. There we go. So remember that this is camera based, so it needs to see the points on top of the other thing for it to work properly, but there we go. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice addition. I, I wouldn't say this is like the most important one to be honest, but it's a nice thing that we can now select multiple objects with our live surface. One thing that I do like that it's a new addition as well is now that you make a live surface, you will get a green name on your outliner. So it makes it a lot easier to know whether or not you are selecting the, the object. Now this next one is the, it's the important one. In the mesh tool, now we have this thing called the on smooth button. And I I wish I had this a couple of months ago because I was really looking for something like this. If you build your character in such a way that you're working with subdivisions, like what we normally do on our courses when we're doing uh, this sort of things, um, you you might need to go back to another subdivision level. And uh, you can do this in Seabridge. You can actually do this in Blender with a modifier because it's not permanent. But here in Maya, you can't do that. So once you have your smoothed mesh, it's pretty much impossible to go back. Yes, you had the retopologize and the remesh and reduce, but they were never working like properly. So here I can apply this. And if this thing, uh, ba -ba -ba, hey, this was created by Cadmus Clark. What do you mean it wasn't? It should be, I'm not sure if it needs, let's see. So let's take a sphere for instance here. And if we say mesh and smooth, and then we delete the history, there we go. And we try to unsmooth, there we go. 
So yeah, maybe this one is not working because I did some changes on the topology and it's not Cadmod Clark subdivision, but it should be um, like that's a, that's what this tool does, right? Like if you have, I believe this one was no, this one was not. I don't remember. No, I do remember this one. We did smooth it out. Let's try it with this one. So mesh on smooth. There we go. Yeah, so when we were doing the retopology, this is what we did, and then we uh, did the other element. So as you can see, the, the on smooth button is going to be really, really cool. If you have a really clean mesh that you want to minimize and you are sure that you had the previous one, you should be able to just go here and on smooth. Again, it needs to make sure, or you need to be sure that it is a it Cadmut Clark subdivision level. So if you made a change in topology or something, then it might not work as expected. Uh, but in this case, um, some of the parts were working fine. I'm, I'm pretty sure like like the hands, I'm pretty sure I did like the hands that way. So let's try the hands here real quick. So let's say mesh and on smooth. There we go. Cool. So yeah, it's probably some part of the body that was not uh, working properly. But yeah, so the on smooth, on smooth option is going to be great to simplify things and to and to create cleaner meshes. Uh, other than that, there's some really interesting things about the animation things. So if we go here to the graph editor sculpting, uh, nowadays we're working with a lot of like motion graphic stuff and uh, having the ability to or having a lot of points everywhere it makes it a little bit difficult for animators to clean stuff up. You need to go and manually like select everything. Uh, with this ones, we have the graph grab option, we have this smooth option, which is really, really cool. Look at this. We go from this very jaggedy curve into a more smooth, nicer um, animation. And then this smear tool that you can use to just like push and pull things around. I think this is going to be really, really cool, especially again for, for motion capture. As I said motion graphics is motion capture uh, stuff. Uh, so yeah, we got some improvements for Maya. We're going to have to jump and, and see what's new in the, in the, Mendel, or the, in the Arnold documentation. Um, I don't think there's going to be like any like super fancy stuff, but usually performance things are really good. There's new USD. I don't work a lot with USD, to be honest, but uh, if you're in a studio where you're using USD, there's more uh, implementation and improvements here. There's improvements on the Substance uh, plugin as well. Bifrost, in case you guys are interested in that. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So the update is up there. It's it, it's out. It's actually competing against a Blender's 3.4 or 3.5. I think they just released as well. So yeah, if you guys want to check it out, make sure to download it and uh, start playing around. If you want to learn a little bit more about Maya, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we have a lot of tutorials covering it. And uh, from now on, we're probably going to be working on Maya 2024. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.